Today I presented the challenges in implementation of precision medicine and uh, actually the implementation of precision medicine at MD Anderson uh, with our impact trials, the initiative for molecular profiling and advanced cancer therapy. The main challenges are access to tissue, uh, fast um, delivery of the results uh, in order to be used in uh, clinical practice, incomplete uh, understanding of tumor biology, as well as uh, lack of effective drugs, and the fact that um, there is limited access to testing and drugs uh, for patients with cancer. To overcome these challenges, uh, I think uh, there are a lot of things that we, uh, the healthcare providers, uh, should uh, try to do. One is we should try to standardize uh, tumor molecular profiling and offer it at the time of diagnosis and during the course of the disease. Um, so far we have been using so a tumor tissue, but uh, moving forward we need to validate uh, the cell-free DNA analysis, in other words using uh, analysis of patient's blood to identify the driver of their disease. We need to optimize bioinformatic analysis in order to have to and, uh, and use the existing technology or advanced technology to have a complete understanding of tumor biology that causes cancer in individual patients and to help discover and um, implement the use of new drugs and new strategies uh, that can uh, Im impact, uh, can uh, inhibit the function of the abnormalities that cause cancer. Therefore, you know, we should be able to offer this early at the stage of the disease and during the treatment to prevent progression. Long-term implications will be we will be able to uh, offer precision medicine to more patients from the time of diagnosis and more effective drugs and at the right time and to optimize their treatment during the course of the disease and hopefully to cure cancer and uh, have a, uh, offer our patients a better quality of life in the process. We will need to be able to share this data I think data sharing is important. The so-called N of 1 databases is important, in other words, to learn from every individual patient and offer this treatment um, that we learn and the outcomes to subsequent patients who present with similar characteristics and to avoid treating patients, for instance, who would not benefit from specific treatments or who would have significant toxicity. In this aspect, I would like to point out that there are uh, immunotherapies that are offered to patients and uh, we have seen uh, significant added tumor activity for specific tumor types and speci with specific characteristics in many patients, but we have also seen rapid progression and severe toxicity in other patients who have been treated with immunotherapy, so we have to be able to develop uh, markers for response and toxicity in those patients and standardize our approach so we can offer them the best treatment possible. So the impact studies, we started them in 2007. Uh, the goal was to uh, optimize treatment selection based on patients' own tumor molecular profiling. And uh, we presented uh, the results of 3,700 patients that we analyzed from 2007 until 2013. Of those patients, uh, uh, 1,307 were treated. 711 were treated with MADS therapy and the remaining with non-MADS therapy. The overall disease control was 35% in those treated with MADS therapy compared to 20% in those treated without MADS therapy. Also, this disease improved disease control was associated with improved progression-free survival in patients treated with MADS therapy, which was four months for this group compared to 2.8 months for patients treated with non-MADS therapy. And there was also an improvement in overall survival by approximately two months. The median overall survival was 
9.7 months in those patients treated with match therapy. We also performed multivariate analysis and we demonstrated that PA3 kinase alterations, uh, pathway alterations were associated with shorter survival and it was an independent factor predicting survival. We uh, found that when we added the intervention, which was the type of therapy, uh, much therapy was also associated with longer survival and it was an independent factor. And we developed a model to predict overall survival in patients who are referred to our program and therefore based on how many risk factors they have, we can predict whether they will live less than three months, which would disqualify them from participating in trials versus uh, over three months or six months, we have a nice uh, algorithm to assess that. As to clinicians, we need to uh, continue conducting uh, prospective clinical trials, take into consideration uh, tumor profile, uh, cell-free DNA analysis, immune markers, and uh, using the best drug possible, uh, ideally in clinical trials, to uh, try to understand how to better use precision medicine and to uh, identify specific markers and specific drugs that work better for specific patients. In this aspect, we are conducting IMPACT 2, a randomized study in precision medicine. We perform tumor profiling and we will incorporate cell-free DNA analysis. We're looking at specific markers of DNA analysis as well as immune markers. And the goal is to optimize treatment selection. In our revised design, patients will have the, the option to select whether they want to be treated with specific drugs or they want to be randomized to receive the MADS therapy, the targeted therapy versus non-targeted therapy, which is also which also includes um, um, real therapy. There is no placebo in, in the program. And uh, to look at the results and the difference in their progression-free survival based on their approach. There are also other um, efforts in which we participate at MD Anderson, such as the Tabor study, uh, led by Dr. Ritzelski, as well as uh, NCI-MATCH and other trials. Mm -hmm.